Okay, so we explained to you the process we went through with deciding on insulation, and we explained to you that like a year, I don't even know how long ago it was now, a year, year and a half ago, we sort of semi started insulating in here with the rock wool, but now we've decided to put Ceratex underneath the rock wool. So that's what we're gonna be starting on next is actually gluing in the Ceratex. So we've started removing the places where we had put some of the Roxel in. Um, and we're gonna do it kind of bit by bit. And we are cutting out um, pieces of the Ceratex. Like this is gonna go in here. And this little, this was like an old, part of the old window. And we are just using contact cement to basically, and a paintbrush to paint it on. Now normally with contact cement, you put it on both sides of the two things that you're gonna attach, let it tack up, and then glue it together. However, in some testing we did with the Ceratex, because the Ceratex is basically, you know, like paper, um, <clears throat> it, it just was kind of hard to work with and it felt like it was, it would wanna, it would get too like, I don't know, it's like spongy, I don't know what the right word is. Um, so since, Really, we are just using the contact cement to kind of hold it enough in place until we get the Roxel up in there and then the rest of our walls up. Um, it doesn't have to really be like permanent bond. We're just doing a one side application of the contact cement. So we're just gonna put it on the metal. We're gonna put the piece in there, glue it in, um, and then you know, we can add the Roxel back on top of it when it's set up. It is really, really stinky. So we're gonna have windows open, fans on, our respirator masks on, gloves, all of that. Um, but the process should go pretty quickly. We're gonna do it in like each little section and this will be what we're, the project we're working on for the next, you know, day or two or a few days until we get it all done. So we're just cutting out some of our smaller pieces for around that window and it's really easy to just cut with with literally just a razor blade. easy okay so we are putting the Ceratex in and I thought we would just do a little test to see what temperature difference it causes as we're putting it in so um, this section right here I'm gonna go ahead and fire my heat gun at it my temperature gun and that's showing 109.5 degrees right now so I will check it after we put some insulation in there and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got the Ceratex in on that section. So I'm gonna test out the temperature again. And looks like we're reading, looks like it's about 89, 89.4. Oh, there we go, about 88.5 is what it's landing at. So that dropped it 20 degrees, it's pretty good. And then we'll add the Roxel and see how, uh, how the temperature looks after that. Okay, so now the Roxel is in. 
and give it one last check. All right, so we're at about 79, 80 degrees. So dropped it about another 10 degrees. And that's actually probably about the ambient temperature in the bus right now anyway. Um, it is about 95 degrees outside. So we've got, um, we've got the air on, but obviously this is right underneath <laughs> a giant window. So um, that is about the ambient temperature here in the bus right now. So I think we are doing pretty good on the insulation. It seems to be working well. Okay, so we've put this air tax along all of the lower um, sort of panels and we've started covering it back up with the rock sole, but all the lower sides are done and we're starting to work on the ceiling. We've done about half the bus so far and what we're doing is we're just kind of working in these little sections between the ribs. We measured and cut every section and it kind of takes two of us to glue and hold and get it all in there um, nice and tight and it doesn't take much glue like I said before we're not um, it, it, it actually the way the stiffness of it it holds it in there fairly well by itself surprisingly we were a little unsure like on the ceiling if it would just want to fall right out so we're actually not using a ton of glue just kind of around the edges just a little bit and it it is so hot out, outside that almost like the second I'm done putting some glue on, we are ready to go ahead and put it up on there. A lot of times you have to let it sit and tack up for a while, like five, 10 minutes, but um, it's ready to go like the second that uh, I'm done putting some glue on. So um, we're gonna keep working on the rest of the ceiling. So last week we showed you how we installed the first layer of our insulation, the Ceratex, and we still have to install all of the rock wool insulation, the rock sole. Um, but before we do that, we're going to start installing, well, making and installing furring strips. Now, <clears throat> this is it's just quarter inch plywood, and this is going to serve three purposes for us. So these are going to go up along all of the ribs of the bus and they're gonna get screwed in all along um, all of the ribs up here and down at the bottom and the three jobs that this is gonna do is number one it's gonna provide a thermal break since the screws are gonna be into the metal ribs um, then our ceiling is then just gonna be attached into this so there won't actually be any like screws coming through the our main ceiling um, 
where like condensation could build up and drip in and all of that. So it's providing a thermal break. It's also going to be like the installation point for our ceiling, which I'll give you a little preview of what that's going to be. It's um, basically going to be like a mock tongue and groove. We're not actually doing real tongue and groove. We're kind of going to make a fake version of our own um, out of probably half inch ply is what we're thinking. And so we've made our furring strips six inch, six inches wide. Um, most of our ribs are the smaller ones are about an inch wide. <coughs> there are the bigger, thicker ones that are two inches wide. So these are six inches wide. So that'll give us like a nice edge on each side of the rib where we can nail in our ceiling strips. Um, but the third job it's actually gonna do is to sort of provide like a little pocket for the rock wool insulation. We can kind of tuck it in as we're installing our ceiling, which is, I mean, obviously if we tried to just put it up right now, there'd be no way for it to stay mounted to the ceiling unless we like ran wires or something to keep it held in place. So our plan is when we are ready to install our ceiling panels, we will be able to kind of tuck the Roxel into, into the furring strips and it'll kind of hold it up like a little shelf as we are then installing our ceiling and our walls and all of that. So hope that all makes sense. But um, that is the plan for today is we are going to get started on cutting furring strips and getting them screwed in to these ribs and hopefully we can do this and get them bent along this curve without any problems. So that's the plan for today. Okay, we've got a few in so far. Uh, we wanted to test out a few and make sure we kind of had our method down before we explain and show you what we're doing. But um, we drew a center line along each of the strips and that just is gonna help us sort of make sure that as we're laying it out that we're staying, it, we don't kind of put the strip off to the side accidentally as we're laying it. Just keeps it in the center of the ribs so that when we screw in, we'll make sure we actually hit the ribs. So um, we drew a center line on all of them and we pre-drilled the wood and counter, uh, countersunk them. And then we're just coming in here, Dominic and I are kind of holding and shaping and bending the wood and Juan's going through, drilling through the metal and then screwing them in as we're holding it in place. Now we did try a couple of different methods um, to make it easier to bend. I mean, it is only a quarter inch plywood, but you know, you can hear it kind of snap, crackle, popping as you push it against the curve. So first thing we did um, was we tried kerfing the back a little bit and I guess, I don't know if we're just not that good at kerfing. We've kerfed some other things, but it was on thicker wood. But um, just because it's so thin, we had a hard time doing that without breaking it. Um, the other thing we did was we tried putting it over a pot of boiling water um, to soften it up and make it bend a little easier, which that totally worked, but it was just taking forever um, to do that. And so we just, like we don't have that much time. So we're just, not we're not doing anything. We're just kind of, pushing it and bending it into place. And we're just going really slow as we push it and bend it 
against this really steep curve right here in the corner. Um, and so far, it's so good. We haven't broken any, so hopefully we can just keep doing that, taking our time, being really careful, and um, get the rest of it done. So we'll show you how we're putting them up for a few more, and then we'll try and finish up the rest of the ceiling, and then we'll have to move on to kind of the lower part of the bus. Okay, I forgot one thing. I was gonna show you, we are leaving little gaps in a couple of places and that's because that's where our wiring for our lights is gonna run so um, we have wiring that's gonna come over and like up back behind and then it's gonna have to like cross through to go out to these lights or cross through um, to come to like different lights that's what all these little blue sticky tapes are is where lights are gonna go so we're just leaving little gaps in the furring strips um, to allow a track for all the lighting wiring to pass through. So that's what that is. Alright. You centered down? Center. Yep. Okay. If you're really like rubbing up against it, it it's basically like little tiny shards of glass kind of. 